Welcome to Let's Make a Game Platformer, uh, episode 7. In last episode, we've added the support for moving a character using arrow keys and A and T characters, as well as camera following the character up to specified bounds. Like this character and also multiple other objects, entities that can be in the scene or in the uh, in the entire game con game entity context. So today uh, I will be working on adding some collision detections and improving on what we've done in the past. So as you can see at the moment, I can just get into this block to the side here and of course we don't want this to happen most likely for the platformer also as you can see there is no gravity I'm just hanging my character is just uh, in the same wider uh, y position all the time and you would expect it, the character to fall to the ground here to the platform below it but first uh, let's do a quick change uh, so our character, when we start up for the character position, is 0, 0, 0. However, what this means is that 0, 0, 0 on the screen is what the camera is focused on, is actually here. We would like the character to be the fo camera to be focused on this point, and so the character, when the character is uh, coordinate is 0, 0, 0, you would want the character to be like here. So you basically want to move it half a half a block this way so that the origin of the character uh, block rendered for the character or the model rendered should be here the way we achieve it is we'll modify the character render sh component and add three extra fields translate for now read only we can do them writable right here on and we'll modify the player prefab with the character renderer to specify that the translate x so we want to move it by half a block to the left half a unit to the left okay so we got that part and we want to modify the renderer character renderer and uh, in this translate here we'll be adding the uh, character render get translate x let's maybe make it a bit more readable character render get translate y that way we'll be moving at this the model instance for the character for every character by the uh, distance that is defined in their component so now when we run it, our character will move, Start starting position of the character will be a bit like that's what I wanted, so exactly above the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0x line. So the origin of the character is here and this is the 0, 0. Okay, so having this, this out of the way, uh, let's get into the working a bit on the physics and later on we'll add some collision detection to it so let's start off with in the logic package we'll create the physics package and we'll create an interface called physics uh, engine with a method process physics so what we'll do in a platformer we'll call this after we update the time because we want the physics engine to be aware of the time that has passed since last uh, refresh and in here we'll call physics engine class so we'll get the engine that we have we don't have it yet but we will have it physics engine from the context and we'll call process physics on it so now that we have this uh, we have to create a class that implements an interface so let's call it physics system 
very generic name we will register it as a system and we will share it with less of the context as a physics engine and we'll implement physics engine um, and so how do we do this so we'll implement this method so the way we do is we, we will iterate through all the objects that want to participate in being uh, modified by the physics systems so physics system so first of all we want to create a component for those objects and we'll call them uh, kinetic object component which will be an interface not a class because it's a component well, of course extends component and we will be storing the value following fields in it uh, first of all so location we already have in the location component so the x y and z location of the object so what we will have here instead in this one is going to be velocity and acceleration and since we at the moment can I would rather, I would rather store them as a uh, primitive objects, primitive uh, values, so we have to separately store velocity x and also do a setter for it, velocity x float velocity x float get velocity y void set velocity y and as I said also acceleration I hope you are familiar with these concepts in uh, physics so just to quickly get through this velocity is basically how much an object moves within, a, within a, based on the time so let's say every second how much it moves velocity is something that you have in cars you have either kilometers per hour or miles per hour depending on where you live and this is velocity this is how fast your car moves depend how far your car goes based on how much time you've spent driving basically acceleration is something that you probably are aware of as well this is how much the speed the velocity of an object changes based on uh, passing time so let's say that you're driving a car and you get your gas pedal to the metal and you're of course going to be increasing your speed the acceleration defines actually how fast you will go through ze from ze from 0 to 100 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour so this is the acceleration or the acceleration if the file is going to be negative it's going to how much you're going to how much your velocity will decrease so we'll have to here set acceleration y okay and we are done with this so now we have to make sure that the player entity is actually participating in the physics or in the movement overall so in the physics because movement we already had before but we will be changing it in a moment so kinetic object component uh, we want these values to be the default so zero at the, at the beginning player doesn't move at all and doesn't accelerate in any way this is what we want to have at the moment and let's mm, okay so how we want to do this physics system so first of all we want to iter uh, iterate through all the objects that have the component and the, because we're doing this every frame we want to use entity index manager to create an entity index for those objects so we'll live cycle system and in initialize method method we'll have entity index manager at component on kinetic object component and also the class has to have a location component the entity has to have a location component otherwise it doesn't make sense to apply physics movement to it uh, so we will name it uh, kinetic object entities and in here we will iterate through those um, so 
so we go kinetic like entities get entities we'll iterate through all of them and uh, let's now name this to kinetic entity okay so we'll be iterating and how uh, so you can imagine that how we want this to work both with the keyboard possible mouse or on-screen keyboard or on-screen controls for phones or gravity and how we want this to work out together is that uh, we'll use events for that so before events we were using events only for getting notified of some changes of some something happening but you can also use events for gathering information so for example in this case the physics system will to each an entity that has this has this entity each entity that has this, has this component it will send an event saying okay tell me what what is happening to this entity so let's create quickly this event let's call it apply physics uh, forces let's go with this it has to extend event class from our own ECS and so what we will have here are two fields that will contain base velocity so basically how it was moving before so object was in, in moving bef uh, before this frame and this is the values of them and we also have uh, force X and force Y so the constructor for it will have a okay and let's do it the proper way I totally forgot. I usually work on a laptop, so I don't add insert. Okay, constructor with these two variables being passed to this class. So this is the the physics system will provide those saying this is the velocity it was moving at, and now we want to first of all out insert provide getters and setters for base velocity because the keyboard system will be modifying the velocity uh, this is so normally if you wanted to have a like, pure physics approach to the game engine uh, you would you would experience a lot of different artifacts that are created due to how actually physics in the real world work and the problem with this is that while they might be appealing that wow this is working exactly how we'd expect this kind of approach doesn't work in games very well especially platform games because imagine yourself standing on the ground and you're gonna jump one jump you're gonna make is gonna be one meter tall one or whatever three feet one's gonna be one meter and ten centimeters so every jump will be different distance will allow you to jump different uh, height to a different height and you don't want this in the platform games you want your jumping to be always exactly the same amount of uh, height unless you boost with some potions or whatever uh, but on ge in general you want the stuff to be very very specific also the fact that the refresh rate at which uh, we will be able to processing the the input from the keyboard can vary not only between different computers but also on the same computers at different times so for example once we might get a fps of 60 once we might get the fps of 30 and if we do the like, correct perfectly correct uh, approach for physics with forces and so on you will get a very bad results not very appealing you have to introduce a lot of other forces which you don't want and don't want to deal with like uh, 
air drag uh, like resistance from the floor to be able to do all those nice things so instead I'll be going here for the very uh, like hybrid approach where the keyboard input is going to be deciding on the velocity and everything else like gravity and, s and, and the other and some attractors you might have in the game so for example there's going to be a character that's or a block that's going to be basically pulling you towards or pushing you away from 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 itself will be running using forces the like general approach for forces and calculating the speed based on that okay so we now have to uh, generate two more methods for getting those forces that's the first thing because that's how the uh, physics engine will be processing them and we also want to have two very useful methods for adding a force to existing force exits so basically you'll have a you might have a multiple forces working on the same character for example gravity and as I said for example the repulsion of some other block that's gonna push you to the left for example or whatever other think you might come up with and these forces have to be working uh, you have to sum all the forces sum all the forces with uh, regard to their car to their sign so negative or positive to get the resulting one force that you'll be calculating velocity based off so in here we'll have to allow to add a force which will do force x plus equals force and the same for add force y force y plus equals force so the physics system first thing it will do is it will send this event this event to this entity so we'll create it quickly apply physics forces uh, apply forces and we have to specify here the base velocity so we'll have to first from the kinetic entity get the kinetic object component kinetic object and from it extract the kinetic object get velocity x and kinetic object get velocity y okay and we will send this event to to this entity so now every every system that wants to manipulate how the any object moves can now register for receiving e this event and apply the forces without knowing what other kind of systems there are out there like gravity and so on and then the whole hard work of figuring out how it's actually something somehow how, how actually this object moves is going to be in here so what we'll do here is an approach uh, that i found online and find very useful is rather than going directly for from forces to speed also store uh, acceleration and use average acceleration across multiple frames to be to provide most more smooth movement so first of all we have to extract the old acceleration old acceleration x which is basically what what it was before kinetic object get acceleration x the same for y and then we will calculate the new acceleration x uh, so normally the if you studied physics or had any kind of physics you know that so force is a equal to mass multiplied by acceleration so based on that you get that acceleration is force divided by mass uh, at the moment we will disregard the mass this is something that we you might want to do this so what we'll what you will do is is also have the kinetic object component have a mass field in it and do it like this but we are assuming that mass is one so in, in our case assuming mass is one we have that acceleration is actually equal to false uh, to force uh, yeah okay so assuming 
uh, mass is 1, we get acceleration equals the force, therefore we'll do uh, apply forces, get force x, and the same for y here. So new acceleration, and we will average them. So we have old acceleration x plus, plus new acceleration x, and divided by 2. And the same for y. Y axis. Okay, uh, so now we'll calculate the new velocity, which is going to be base velocity. So it's going to be, if nothing has changed it in the uh, in the event here, will be basically going to be an old velocity, but we want the keyboard to actually be able to directly modify this to provide this like very precise movement you would like to have in a platform game. And we have to add the average acceleration multiplied by amounts of so. Uh, this is another physics 101. Uh, velocity equals uh, acceleration multiplied by time so or velocity zero so the old velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time so how we get the time well if you remember recently we've had the time manager object and we will have here uh, Let's calculate it once only, so not for every entity because we don't want to do it multiple time. Seconds that passed from last frame is get time since last update. This is in milliseconds, so we have to divide it by 1000. So this will contain how many seconds has passed since last, since last uh, up the game loop update or the rendering update. So we multiply the average acceleration by seconds, and that's our new velocity for x-axis and we have to do the same for y-axis of course and that's it we will just now apply those we have new acceleration x new acceleration y for y and kinetic object set velocity x, new velocity x, the same for y axis. We're almost there, and we have to make sure that we save uh, kinetic entity. That we'll change. That we'll save all the changes that we've done for this entity. Let's maybe just I'll keep it here. This as a comment. That's a useful comment. Um, here and this is going to be a useful comment here and yeah okay so now we are updating the values for velocity so now we want to be modify the keyboard system to rather than doing everything on the update so we don't need the game loop listener anymore because we'll be responding to the apply physics forces event rather than doing this in an update. Um, so we don't need this. And instead of this, we will have receive event. And we we'll can call this methods apply movement. We will have apply physics forces event entity ref entity uh, we are interested in prior controller component so you only want to receive this event for entities that have this component so any entity that doesn't have this component this method will not be invoked for it even though we'll, the system will send this event this system will not receive it and we also want to make sure we yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah. Uh, so here, we don't need time anymore. 
because we are, don't specify how much it has moved, we just specify the speed. So we don't need time manager either. We don't need entity index manager either because we are not. We don't use the index here. So what we'll have here, instead of doing this, we'll set base velocity x. This is movement to the left, so it's going to be negative. And rather than having this set here, let's go for having this stored in the player controlled component. So we'll add here uh, two float variant float uh, fields. Um, get movement. Oh, for now one one movement velocity. For now one field. Uh, so it's going to be velocity negative player controlled get movement velocity and for the right mo moving to the right will add the n positive value of it get movement velocity excellent and we don't need this because we are not modifying the location here this is responsibility of the physics system uh, this is not needed anymore this is not needed but however we have to specify these values in a player prefab and so in the player prefab in the, the player controlled we will have a field movement velocity of 4 ok uh, this still doesn't do all you want because after doing this part you want to actually move the character, right? So let's extract this as a method uh, calculate new velocity and acceleration and after that we will apply the values to the the physics system to the object itself so we'll once again iterate through all the kinetic objects and extract the velocity kinetic object uh, yeah we have to first get this part so extract the Kinetic uh, object, kinetic object, get velocity x, the same for y, even though at the moment we don't allow moving in the y direction, but this will happen shortly. Then we want to get the location component. And we want to calculate the new location, yes, which is going to be location, the previous location plus, once again, velocity multiplied by seconds. So, um, this is another physics here, 101. Uh, distance, I think S is the one that is used for it, is speed multiplied by time. So, so this is, so position is all position and how much the, it has traveled is velocity multiplied by time that has passed and we do the same for y axis we leave the comment here and what we'll do is just say location set x new location x and the same for y axis and we have to make sure we save the changes. Okay, um, I think that should work as in exactly what we had before. So we should be able to move the character left and right. Yeah, that's working exactly as before. However, now we do it in a fancy way. Oh, we don't have, doesn't stop. So what we have to do here 
in the keyboard system I have to modify it so what happened is that even though I released a key like left or right key the character kept moving that's because the base was it was not modified here so the base velocity was kept for what it was before so in here we have to say set base velocity is zero if neither left if we don't move want to move left or right the base velocity so without all the other forces that should have to be applied to the entity should be zero so it should not move should be stationary so let's run this quickly again to the, make sure that we can actually stop the character from moving once we release the key yeah okay so now I release the key it stops moving excellent so we have this part of the, of the way and so as I said we want to now do something that, gr that simulates gravity and to do this we'll create a quickly here a package called gravity because this might grow later on a bit for example we, can, we might have some kind of objects in the scene that modify the gravity but for now we'll just go with one thing and also imagine you have fireballs or some other bullets or whatever that that has to move and they have to move slowly of course because it's, you want to be to be avoidable so characters should be able to dodge a fireball or bullet or whatever that is being shot at your character uh, these should not be affected by gravity so only those so we'll introduce a new component which is going to be an interface as every component which is affected by gravity component and only those component that have only those entities that have this component will actually be affected by the gravity system that we'll write in a moment and so another thing that we have to consider is uh, for example helium balloons they shouldn't move down they should move up uh, this could be solved by doing some more precise physics and writing a more precise physics engine where you will have like density of air density of the weight and so on we don't want to go into this we want to uh, simplify it a little bit at least so in here instead we will have uh, a field specifying the multiplier for gravity so basically if something should be behave normally as you would see in the world every almost every object in the world is gonna fall uh, then the multiplier will be one if for example you have a balloon you the um, multiplier will be negative for example minus one if you want something falling very slowly like a feather rather than doing the whole air drag and so on mass uh, air density and so on or even uh, pressure at atmospheric pressure stuff like that you will just say that multiply gravity multiplier for the feather object is like 0 0.2 so slowly slowly falls to the, the ground okay so we have this we want the player to be affected by gravity so it has to have this component and as I said the gravity multiplier should be one so the most common one so we'll have gravity system that is a system so it has to be registered and it has to receive event uh, public void apply gravity apply physics forces and only for those that have affected only entities so this method should be called only for those entities that have affected by gravity component affected by gravity so what we do here is event and let's now just go further I meaning we might modify this later as I said you might have gravity reversed so everything going up rather down or left or right at the moment we'll just go with a straight gravity going down so we will uh, okay we have to uh, define the gravity 
constants. This is something that you might know from school. So like it's the gravity constant for Earth is it's not called gravity constant, but this is acceleration. Gravity that we experience on Earth is 9.81 kilograms multiplied by meters by second seconds square. So we just uh, so this is the force or the acceleration we experience. As I said, we are at the moment have force equal to acceleration. So sorry. So the, so the uh, gravitational acceleration, is the Earth gravity acceleration is 9.81 meters per second square. However, since we have force here, we have to multiply it by, by mass. But we assume for the time being that the mass is one kilogram of every object. Therefore, we just simplify it to uh, 9.81 here without disregarding mass. And the reason why we have the negative is here is because y-axis up is positive, down is negative, and since gravity should go work down, it, this is negative. And we multiply it by the multiplier for gravity. We will quickly extract this to make it more readable as a constant saying gravity force, because we specify force even though it's actually ac acceleration in this case. Okay, and yeah, that should do this for gravity. Let's see what happens. Oh, let me get, get this run again, because you haven't seen what happened. And it's important that you know. Okay, uh, as you can see, the character fell off the screen, which is what you'd expect. Well, you'd expect to it to stop here on the block, but it didn't because we don't have a collision detection yet. So this is next thing that's going to be working on. Uh, first of all, not all objects might want to be participate in the collisions. For example, you might have ghost object uh, that is moving, uh, like a ghost character, and you don't want it to, like, ghosts can pass through walls or through anyone else or whatever. So we, only on, we want to only have some of the objects that are being moved, the kinetic objects, have actually uh, be experience, experiences collisions. So what we'll do here is introduce a new component, colliding object component. This is an interface because it's a component. And in here we will have uh, object. Uh, in here we have to define what is the bounds. At the moment we'll work only with rectangles. What is the bounds of the collision object? In other words, what is the smallest rectangle that encompasses the whole character? So to do this, we'll have a we'll be taking the for the location the location component and for how the the whole rectangle that encompasses a ca character based uh, starting off from the origin point for the character so the middle lower part for our player for example because that's why we removed it in the player prefab here minus zero five we will be specifying here in the colliding object uh, similar values that we had in the character component so get translate x which is going to be relative to origin of the character as well as get weight width and height so this for values in the player prefab we will ensure that it has this component so we will have colliding object component and it will have translate x of minus 0 0.5 so in most cases this will be overlapping with this so the values we'll see here it's going to be the same for this and but we will also specify translate y here which is 0 and width of the character is because it's a cube at the moment and the cube has a size of 1 
in our case we'll have a height of one as well so these are the values for the player colliding objects so the uh, space that player needs to be uh, to display itself or to exist in the world the world that we create in the game and now what we'll do here in the physics system so we calculate where we want the character to be after we applying the velocity and acceleration and so on and so forth now we have to make sure that we can exist in this new location so in here first of all as I said we don't want all the uh, all the entities to have the component but those that do have collecting collider colliding object so we'll do entity kinetic entity so if a kinetic entity has the component so the, the entity is actually physical and takes space and should not be allowed to move on to specific places so if it if the object is colliding we have to uh, resolve any collisions so figure out how far actually we can go in the direction from old location to new location so from this to this how, f how far we can along the path we can actually move so we'll be modifying the location y and we'll call it the method resolve vertical collisions we'll be passing kinetic entity here kinetic object velocity and maybe not for now just go with kinetic entity velocity and colliding object or just entity colliding object for now and we'll have new location x resolve horizontal collisions kinetic entity colliding object so we'll create this method and so what we'll do here is yeah so we will need the velocity here velocity y and I'll tell you why in a moment velocity y uh, so normally when we are doing uh, vertical collisions we have to do both top and bottom of the character to check that we are doing however to save some work if we know that character is moving up we only have to make sure that it can fit while going up when it's moving down it has to fit moving down um, in general maybe I should just rewind a little bit uh, the way we will be checking the collisions is that let's imagine here I'll do some ASCII art awesome here let's say that we have a let's just duplicate this oh. let's say we have a block here right uh, make it a bit larger this is our block our character right uh, the way we want to do, we will do co doing the collisions is we will be selecting this three spaces for checking left collisions, this three spaces for checking right collisions, this three for checking bo bottom collisions, and these, I don't know how to mark them, let's go with this. Uh, for checking upper collision going up uh, the reason why we're not doing the whole thing is performance and also we don't want to have some weird effects that when we are for example jumping up and we will be catching like the whole thing and so this is very complicated but just let just trust me that that's how it should be done so rather than checking the whole bounce of the uh, the character on the moving object for collisions we will be checking the only small strip of the edge of the object in the direction that we will be testing it in so first of all as I said we will be checking that the 
if velocity y is greater than zero, which means we are going up. So need to check upper bounds. And let's specify what kind of sizes of those we will be doing. Um, so we'll have some uh, constants here, horizontal collider vertical space that's sixteenth of the of the height collider is the correct yeah collider that doesn't know the word so I'll just introduce those and describe them in a moment to you horizontal collider with also one sixteenth of the size of it. So a small slip, so one sixteenth of the size of it. And for vertical collider height, it's also going to be one sixteenth. Depending on the precision of the physics, you might change this. So I've I've figured out that this is like a good good starting point, one sixteenth of the actual size. So in here we will define the bounding boxes. Rectangle to the float collision bounds. So for moving so we are doing collision bounds for moving up. So rectangle to the float. So it's gonna be current location, so uh, float mm, location x and we also need float location y collision bounds is going to be location x so where we want the location, to, new location to be the we have to also make sure that we are doing the translate x and width multiplied by mm. so as I drew this before the bot we are doing working on the bot top collider so it's important that we do not overlay the top collider to be overlaid to be starting here it has to be more or less as aligned with the rightmost edge of this one and the same for the right side I'm probably explaining this really badly but it's really difficult to explain we cannot have this happening because then uh, we will not be seeing some collisions here and so on so it has to be starting just when this one finishes which means we'll have to multiply it by horizontal collector width okay this is the left bounds now uh, x bounds now y bounds for the colliding object it's gonna be colliding object get translate y plus colliding object height and we want to have this multiplied by the one sixteenth, which is the collider height. Uh, am I doing this right? Yes, because we are working on the upper bound of it. Is it correct? No, it's not correct. Um, let me think for a second. We want to start at. 1 minus that's why because we are starting so this is the origin 0 0 here so we want to move up to here so the this is the height this one line this is the height we want to have so we have to from the whole height subtract the 1 16th of the height so 1 minus 16 1 16th of the height and here width of the bounds is colliding object width 
and we want to multiply it by uh, 1 minus 2 times horizontal colander width because we have to have the whole width minus width of this part and this part right and height is simple multiplied by vertical collider height excellent so this is our bounds and now we'll be introducing a new, new event my apologies if this episode is getting really long but this is probably the most com code intensive episode you will see in the series but we are almost there already almost as in probably like 10 minutes more of coding so get collision point event so it has to extend event okay and we will have here so first of all we have to specify the direction in which we are moving so we will have a right left up and down the collision we want to get so when you're moving left, you want to check for collision in the left direction and so on. So in here, everything that's going to be checking for collisions has to have the rectangle double D, which is 2D, uh, which is object bounds. It has to have the direction in which we has to check for the collision. And it will be returning a nearest this object will be returning the nearest collision point. So nearest in from this, going from this direction, how far you can, basically how far you can go in this direction with your character. Uh, so we will be having a constructor here with the object bounds and the direction is the input and the we have to be able to get the direction and bounds and also uh, get the collision point. However, uh, since we'll be sending this event to multiple things that's going to be providing collisions, uh, we want to make sure that we only uh, read the, the physics system itself has only knowledge of the how far you can go which is then uh, based on all possible collisions uh, so we will have here a method saying rather than being able to directly set this value the nearest position we'll say that the systems that are doing the collisions detection actually will register collision point collision sorry, collision register collision collision point so how far you can do in, how far you can go in uh, in the direction specified use with the bounds specified using for each each system that it does so each system will report if there is any collision at all and now we have to check if the direction is if you're moving to the right or direction is up which means basically that you're moving into negative values and nearest collision point is null so there was no collision detected yet by any other system or nearest collision point is greater than collision then it means that this collision point is the new minimum uh, that we can uh, how to describe it uh, so this is the new minimum so before you are able to go to up in an up direction to 10 in to the position of 10 however now this new system says that we can only go to 5 and so we have we realistically based on two collisions of one system saying 10 one system saying 5 we can only go as far as 5 so we 
specify that the nearest collision point is collision point in this case. If, however, we are moving in the direction left or direction down, so towards negative values, then we only want to overwrite it only if there was no collision detected yet or nearest collision point is less than the new collision point, in which case nearest collision point is collision point. We could do actually do an OR of both of them. So let's copy this one. It's going to be a really long one. But oh well. Even though less code is not always great, I'd rather not repeat the same code twice. So either, yeah. So either we're moving right or or up, which means we are going towards positive values, and there was no collision, or the collision uh, that was previous collision is greater than the current collision, then we will be saying this value, or if we're moving to the left, so the negative, or down, so the negative values, towards the negative values, and there was no collision, or the collision point was less than the collision point. Uh, yeah, so this is our event that we will be sending to the systems. Let's delete this quick. Oh, no, let's see probably going to still be using this for explaining all the other bounds. So we will be now setting the collision event, get collision, collision point, new get collision points, we'll be passing here the collision bounds and the direction. We are moving up here, right? Yeah, we are moving direction up. So upper bounds, and we'll be sending into the entity. And after all the uh, systems respond to us, we'll be checking if there was a collision at all. So it's there was a collision reported at all. If there was, we will specify that the new location x actually will be specifying here hmm. actually will be returning the location x which is gonna be the nearest collision point and from that we have to subscribe sub subtract the colliding object translate x translate y sorry translate y yes and also we want to kinetic uh, we want to actually ah we also want to make sure that we stop moving in this ob in this direction so in here in addition to this we want to have a, a kinetic object component here because once you so we're moving up and we hit something that one is that we want to have want to make sure that we are not moving any further. So our so we bumped into some wall and our velocity should be zero because we are not moving in that direction anymore. Uh, that's that. I think that's all we have to do for moving up. Now for moving down. So if velocity less than zero we want to write, once again, to create the collision bounds. Actually, we copy the whole thing. Let's go. The lazy route. Need to check lower bounds. So the lower collision point. So 
x is going to be the same, width and height going to be the same, but the starting point is will be from the bottom side from so from here. So in here we had the here so zero so just to translate eight we don't we don't need to account for the height here. Uh, let me double check this. Yes that's fine. We are moving in a down direction and if there was a collision we do this Ah, that's wrong. We also want to here subscribe the height, subtract the height of the object as well, because we are moving up. And okay, yeah, that's what it is. So we want to set velocity, and in here we will just do minus this one. Okay, so we got the. If nothing has changed, then we do return the velocity, no, the location y and now we'll do, we have to pass here all the other values so kinetic object, velocity y, location x, new location y and we'll have to have, to have the same here, velocity y velocity x, sorry, new location x, new location y let's rename this to location x and location y let's move it below our beautiful ASCII art. Okay, um, and this is gonna be pretty similar. So let's copy this part. I might later ex ex extract to a separate method to not have this copy part. In here, we, however, we'll be doing X, which is going to right, and X going to left bounds and we're returning location x. Okay, so for going to right, right bounds, so this part, we have the location x translate plus width multiplied by y minus collider width. So one minus this part. So our width is this. Size of this is 1 16th, so this part is 1 minus 1 16th of the width. Uh, location x, uh, sorry, y is the translate plus height multiplied by horizontal collider vertical space. And the width of it is horizontal collider width, and the height of it is one minus horizontal minus two times horizontal collider vertical space. I believe that's what we want, and we are moving in the right direction. We're going way over the time that we are supposed to be doing this. Ah, and here it should be basically y that we are modifying because we are moving in the y direction here. So in here is going to be velocity x, and the returning nearest collision point minus translate x minus width, and here. We're checking the left side, so this is just get translate x uh, and y is so the it's gonna be the same as the, the 
this guys uh, width is the same and height is the same for this one okay that's this side we are moving left and we are setting velocity x and translate x I think that's it so after we are calculate those we apply them to the values here we set them and the save the changes also these changes will also be more saved as well the velocities that are being reset okay uh, that looks good now we have to make sure that actually we are be so this is something that sends the event and processes the output of the event now we need something to actually figure out where the collision happened and for that we'll create a new class here in the physics package called platform collider and the platform collider will be our system of course and we will be listening for the uh, get collision point event okay so in this class we'll be iterating through all the blocks that we have in the scene uh, however to speed it up a bit performance wise we are pre we'll pre-calculate those blocks so this bounds of those blocks here platform blocks linked list for now we'll just go through every block every time but this can be later improved I'll show how probably but never optimize up, pro up, up front and we want to fill this out when level is loaded so similarly the, uh, how we're creating the mesh or the model for the and for the blocks we are doing the same here event entity ref entity level component level we'll go through all the get block coordinates we are interested only in the for the time being at least for the coordinates or bl of blocks we assume that all of them are cube we will once we introduce some other ones other shapes if we introduce them we'll have to modify this class to make sure that we generate correct shapes for this for the correct rectangles so we have to split this one as you remember our levels have x comma y comma z for the keys so we have to split by comma and x is the first one y is the second one we don't care about the z and the platform blocks we will add new rectangle to the float x coordinate y coordinate with one and one so as you have the cube always at the time being and we also have to make sure that when the level is un unloaded so similarly as there we have performed the entity before component removed we have to make sure that we clear the our list of blocks so in here well first of all since we're going to be going through all of them we'll have to figure out which one is the correct one or actually we don't have to do it we have to we have this already done in, inside of our uh, up, uh, get collision point uh, event so in here we'll go through all the platform blocks and check if the platform block intersects the object bounds if it does 
depending in which depending in which direction we are moving. So have a switch here event get direction case so if moving to the left the 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 furthest port you can the furthest point you can go to is event register collision at platform block get max x so if you're going to the left you can go as far as the maximum x of the platform block so in here we have to cast it to flow to to float uh, for going right register collision platform block get minimum x break for going down you can go as far as the maximum y break and for going up register collision float platform block get mi minimum y this is as far as you can go we'll add the break here even though it's not really needed and that's it for the collision okay uh, welcome back I had such a slight problem with the computer for some reason the application didn't want to start I had to kill the process so now I can just run this application and see if our character indeed does not fall through the platform anymore. So, yeah, we are stopping at the platform. We get to the edge and we fall off. Excellent. So this is what we want to see. We So to recap, in this episode we, first of all, changed how our keyboard controls work. We introduced the collision detection, gravity, and everything lands smoothly so far. Let's run, try to run to the left and see how it works. However, at the moment we have no way of getting to the other platform. So we cannot jump, basically. Nothing happens. Uh, so this is something we will be working in the next episode, because this one is pretty long already. Uh, so. Thanks you for watching. Uh, I hope you get interested in the programming, game programming in Java, and you find this uh, this series interesting and some informative in a way. And uh, if you like it, please subscribe and like the video. In fact, all my videos, if you can. And so, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.